Hello everyone, uh, Chinmay Shede here. This is my third video in the series of ISO 9001-2015 and it's for Kanorshia, let's do it for better, okay? This is my company. Uh, so really, um, uh, the second uh, pillar of QMS for ISO 9001-2015 is for uh, a risk-based thinking. Uh, so we already saw introduction to ISO 9001 2015 we also saw a plan to check act cycle video and this is the third in power of risk and power of failure okay so uh, this video gonna be interesting because I'm gonna talk a bit about a quality management system also I'm gonna talk a bit about a risk management philosophy um, in life okay so uh, it's going to be a mix of a technical and personal. So bear with me. <laughs> all right. So uh, first of all, what is risk-based thinking and why it is so important in ISO 9001-2015? As you know, the risk element has been brought first of all into uh, uh, a uh, uh, quality management system standard called as API Q2 what was uh, meant for oil and gas service industry first of all after that it slowly transcended into api q1 which was for manufacturing industries in oil and gas uh, industry and now it has become a part of iso 9000 2015 so it is very important for those companies who are still on iso 9000 2008 to transition to iso 9000 2015 because the big gap for you guys especially you guys who are mom and pop shops who are uh, restaurants who are non-manufacturing entities the main important thing is for you to do a risk analysis oil and gas companies manufacturing companies have been doing it what are the different ways they do it oil and gas companies have a dedicated departments they have dedicated softwares um, uh, they have dedicated risk teams who analyze risk on each project on each product and on each plant and on each supplier actually so they have risk based matrix for all these four quantities that i just mentioned so they're pretty much covered so if they get audited if they they can prove their compliance but what about the companies who are like um, non-manufacturing companies you know like uh, a restaurant service provision companies for example if you are on apiq2 you are covered because you are already in compliance with that risk section that apiq2 has but what about the sections which are related to um uh, let's say uh, customer satisfaction and you, you, your company if you're not oil and gas or manufacturing you will struggle a bit so that's a practical viewpoint so you can get a consultant who can say do all in this step this is my form that i can provide you now the auditors would look for something robust that is intrinsic in your system so make sure that you have following at least okay so the first one is uh in the design phase so you provide auditors or you uh, maintain those records of design fmea failure mode effect analysis and all of you can actually do a, a survey on that uh, on the web or on the google so that's design failure mode effect analysis dfmea the second one is actually a pfmea which takes into account process failure mode effects analysis so what failure mode effects analysis is you know those are pretty terms thrown by consultants thrown by books thrown by websites at you so again we are looking at practical view right so what is fmea you can google it you can read through the books so let me explain it real quick okay for you who don't know fmea so it really determines in how many modes a failure can uh, can happen and that can have an effect on your whole system or whole organization or whole supply chain as such so that um, uh, you need to consider that 
okay so failure modes what kind of failure modes and effect analysis what kind of effects it have and what kind of analysis you do so basically fmea whether it's a design fmea process fmea it gives you a measure of what called as a risk analysis okay so if you even if your organization doesn't have a sophisticated system like critter or some uh, some uh, organizations do maintain excel uh, macro sheets and all that it doesn't matter as long as for each project and uh, for critical processes in your system have you done your failure mode effect analysis you should be pretty awesome pretty good okay so don't go fancy don't use any other systems don't employ anything else just use failure mode effect analysis system i won't go deep into details of this because failure mode effect analysis a lot of webinars a lot of seminars are persistent into the market right now i don't want to kill the market i can but i don't want to <laughs> so so uh just go for failure mode effect analysis workshop uh, learn the basic uh if you don't want to attend the workshop uh i do have a glossary of all fmea lectures on youtube uh please send me an email at uh conversia inc.com so that end.com i am my apologies so it's uh c-o-n-v-r-v-e-r-t-i-a so it's conversia ind as india ind conversion end at gmail.com so send me an email and i can return you back with the all the hyperlinks i have i do have in a word file that can give you a systematic failure mode effect analysis training that your organization can leverage if you can attend that if you can um, apply those skills for each and every project that you guys are doing i think you should be good so that risk based thinking so all your decisions should be based on those risk so that's what iso 9000 uh, 2015 wants you to do to consider all the risk and the risk consider two portions okay the first is the negative portion of that where you had you can have negative impacts which is the uh, traditional uh, risk as you've been considering but the second portion of that is called as opportunities which is also based on probability but it does have a positive impact so that's the reason it's called as opportunities so you have to consider risk which are considered in negative sense and which comes natural to you and me but also it comes with opportunities so let's take an example of opportunity let's say i am fired from a company I'm at risk right so what I can do is cry over that spilled milk for few few more months or I sit down and say what I know and how I can explore myself and you know what that's what I did to start Conversia let's do it better okay so just a personal example but same holds true for all the organizations you have risk you have opportunities you have to consider both and it can obviously lead to what a one important term that you and me have been impressed with what is that what is that <laughs> uh, continuous improvement right whether it's a negative or positive you're gonna act and you're gonna make your organization full proof that you are very much full proof to that new system okay so that risk-based thinking for you so as a summary don't go for fancy systems don't go for anything else create a internal system that assesses all the risk all the opportunities internally for each project so you had to maintain those records to show to the auditors when you go uh, to that audit next time okay and um, uh, as I said uh, failure mode effect analysis they will teach you in those seminars what is uh, the probability of occurrence what is the probability of severity and all that so i'm not going into that so just make sure you have maintained those numbers too because auditors do not only want to have the instances but they also want to have the numbers okay so instances and numbers 
can uh, make it real successful in your next art okay thank you and my next video um i think i have another two sets of videos that i promised on <laughs> linkedin and uh, facebook so i'm gonna cover those after that we're gonna go straight back to the whole trend I, I will come up with the copy next time okay thank you bye bye